All right, we have a lot of new people coming in to Digimon TCG lately, uh, especially noticed in my comments and on my last videos, uh, people who are either new to the game or still learning. Uh, I get a lot of questions about like, what deck should I build? Uh, what's the best build to play if I'm new, et cetera, et cetera. So we're gonna go over that in, that video, in this video today. Uh, in my opinion, I think the best deck to build if you're new to the game and to learn the game with is Imperial German. So we're going to go over kind of the uh, standard play pattern, standard build, and uh, what to expect from the deck in the future. Alright, so why Imperial German? Well, first of all, I think it has the most beginner-friendly and powerful keyword in the game, which is jamming. Uh, Digimon can't be deleted in battles against security Digimon. This pretty much uh, removes like one aspect of thought from the game, which is do I swing or do I not swing? Like, am I gonna lose my stack if I attack or not? So it kind of removes that risk reward aspect and that makes it a lot easier for newer players to focus on what they're trying to do and removing the interaction of the opponent's board which um, is kind of lame and Imperial German can be frustrating to play against for that reason. But again, for that same reason, that's why it is very beginner friendly. Imperial German is a fast and aggressive deck. Uh, it's capable of getting multiple attacks out in one turn seemingly out of nowhere. So uh, it can steal games very easily. Uh, the main combo is very, very simple. It's just a three card combo. Uh, Imperial German, because it's a, it's a blue deck, it has a lot of inherent draw power, so it's going to be something that you're going to get off pretty frequently. Uh, the deck is relatively inexpensive to build from scratch, especially uh, in relation to other TCGs like Yu-Gi-Oh! or Magic. So uh, if you're literally brand new to Digimon, you have like zero cards, you've never bought a pack before in your life, um, this is a good way to get started just buying signals and you can get into the game and start winning for about $160, give or take. I'll uh, break down the price later in the video. The deck has room for personal expression. Uh, the actual Imperial German core is uh, pretty small, so you have room to expand past those cards that you absolutely have to play. Uh, it's especially interesting because you have access to green cards. So in that way, it's kind of like a multicolor deck. So you can definitely incorporate those. Um, why is my gain so high? All right, whatever. Uh, okay, uh, also the deck is future-proof. Um, there is a lot of Imperial German support that's already been confirmed, uh, not to mention the fact that Imperial German is a fan favorite from the anime, so kind of like a Charizard or Dark Magician Blue Eyes situation. We all know that the uh, anime fan favorite cards tend to get a lot of support and even their legacy cards end up being useful at some point in the future. So it's a good deck to invest in long term. And finally, and most importantly, um, this isn't some like new beginner deck that kind of is like easy but doesn't really win. Uh, Imperial German definitely wins games, especially once you master the deck and like all the different matchups and how to play them. And Imperial German is a deck that can just high rule your way to victory. Like sometimes you just draw all your pieces, and your opponent doesn't see an out, and you win the game automatically. So just based on that, you're gonna be winning some games. You might even get some first places in some tournaments, and that'll help you expand your collection, especially if you're a new player. Winning tournaments is the most efficient way to increase your collection for sure. All right, so here's the basic idea of the deck. This is your uh, four attack combo. So first thing is that you go into your level five Pyildramon. Uh, you typically wanna hide this in your raising area so it's not vulnerable to removal. Uh, the effect is jamming, so again, that's the main keyword of the deck and kind of what it revolves around. And then the inheritable skill is if this Digimon has Imperial German in its name, unsuspend it. So then of course we digivolve that into our Imperial German. So right away, the first effect is that when you digivolve, you unsuspend all your Digimon with jamming. So the idea is that you bring your Pale German out of your raising area, then you attack with it. So that's one attack. You digivolve into a Peel German, so you have to have at least three memory to pull off this combo, but that's why we run um, Davis and Hammer Sparks. So getting three memory is not really a problem in the Imperial German deck. So then once you restand from digivolving, you attack with the Imperial German again, 
and then you restand with the Pyodramon inherited, and then you can swing again. So that's your third attack. And then finally, you digivolve into BT5 Omnimon, and you use the uh, unsuspend and blitz ability for the final fourth attack. And also, Omnimon has a um, deletion negation effect. So if it would be deleted by an opponent's effect, or if it would be sent back to your hand or deck, you can return a level six from your stack. So it would be Imperial back to your hand and you negate that effect. Uh, oh, actually this one is trash to level six, but anyways, it's still a good effect. So it can help you be a little bit defensive in those situations where you don't necessarily finish off your opponent with the combo. But for the most part, if you're getting in four attacks and if you've swung in early, that's probably enough to finish the game. All right, so here is the example build. This is um, the most popular build um, popularized by, I believe his name is Dan Vang, something to that effect. Um, this is pretty much the bog standard build everyone has been playing for Imperial German. They've just been net decking him after he got first place at that regionals. Um, so uh, you run four Demi Vimon as your egg. When you attack with the jamming keyword, you draw a card. So you get a draw with uh, the level three Vimon, your Pyle Jermon and Dino B, and your Impeal Jermon. Uh, it helps you dig for your pieces. And also when you swing with your Impeal Jermon, it helps you kind of draw cards to set up a second stack in case that this one wasn't enough to finish the game. All right, so then moving on to our Rickies, you have the four jamming keyword Vimon. This is one of the strongest rookies in the game. Uh, number one, it has jamming, so basically it won't die to anything in security, so it's pretty much a free attack that you don't have to worry about it dying. And if it's on top of a Demi Vimon, you also get a draw. So it helps you dig for your combo pieces early if you were a little bricked out. Um, then we run the, I believe this is the BT2 Vimon. The inheritable is um, when you restand during your main phase, you draw a card. So essentially, uh, if this card is in your inheritables, when you digivolve into Imperial German, you draw an extra card for just for digivolving. So that's pretty good. Um, you can kind of replace this with uh, the BT1 Gabumon on play draw card for three memory. Um, these are pretty interchangeable in my opinion. Uh, Gabumon helps you dig for cards earlier. This V-Bond is more powerful um, if you can see your Imperial German combo. So um, it's kind of high end, uh, high reward versus a little more consistent, but a little lower end. Um, play with that as you will. And six vanillas. Um, I think that's a pretty standard ratio, especially in this deck, because you want to be able to get out some cheap rookies early to get it, try to get in some uh, chips into their security. So that way um, you can finish them off with your three or four tech combo. Uh, level four is pretty standard. You have your one cost blockers. You have your uh, one cost the digivolves. And then you have a uh, three Lobomon, which can help you finish the game on top of Davis. Uh, it's a very very good card to kind of get in that extra swing so in that case in that situation it kind of fills the same niche as Omnimon except you're gonna need uh, about five memory instead of three to get that off but uh, the Sora and Joe can help us get there which we'll talk about when we get there uh, level fives for Pale Dramon for Dino B this is very very standard um, there's nothing else you can play there uh, for Imperial German, uh, obviously it's your win condition, you have to do that. Um, and then here's the one tech Nidhogg. Uh, this was something that was popularized, popularized by this build, and I think it's definitely the best secondary level 6 you can play. Uh, you pretty much just threaten it with your Dino B in uh, your raising area, and it just gives you an option for removal, which this deck really sorely lacks. And a lot of times if your opponent is not expecting it, um, pretty much everyone is now, but in case they're not, you can catch them off guard, especially since they might try to race you um, in terms of security, because this is a very fast aggro deck, they might feel that they have to race you to not fall behind, and then you can punish them with a Nidhogg. So it's a very good card in this deck, you can even run two. Blitz Omni, again, this is your uh, part of your finishing combo. Uh, four Hammer Sparks, pretty standard. Two Kakaitis Breath. Um, this is pretty much the only removal you have in blue. 
um, it's not a particularly good removal, but um, it does get in there. It forces your opponent to have to rebuild their stacks and can clear particularly um, annoying cards like a Sword Defeat, uh, a particularly large Lord Nightmon, maybe a black deck that has a really big uh, level 6 or level 7 with Blocker Inheritable. Um, it can help you out things that you normally wouldn't be able to out. Um, there's definitely other cards you can play in this slot, especially if you're more willing to tech into green. Uh, we'll go over those in a second. Uh, three Davis. This is pretty much one of the best tamers in the game, along with Mimi and TK. Um, you can search for your combo pieces, including uh, Nidhogg, Dino B, and uh, all your blues. So uh, Davis has always been pretty cracked, and it also sets up, sets up your Lobomon. And the last card is the Sora and Joe Dual Tamer. Um, this can help you get to 5 memory, so you can more easily Lobo for game, because it stacks on top of the Davis, and uh, it also helps you remove sources from your opponent, so you can get rid of some pretty annoying stuff, like the aforementioned black blocker inheritables, um, what else, you can get rid of Pikmons, you can get rid of um, black war groundmons and purple, um, what other annoying inheritables are there? Um, you can source strip green, so that way they can't digiburst as much, you know, stuff like that. So, uh, Sword and Joe's a pretty valuable tech card, and it's the most consistent uh, memory tamer. You could run a fourth Davis, but um, I think the Sora and Joe has a lot of value as a one of. Alright. Uh, okay, so with that build, uh, there's a pretty general play pattern. Hasn't really changed since um, the Imperial Javon deck came out in set 1.5. So essentially what you're trying to do is you're trying to get in a couple early attacks. Uh, you're aiming to get your opponent into lethal range as soon as you can. So you're looking to get them to 3 or even 2 security. And um, this will really put pressure on them because Imperial Javon is kind of inevitable in this deck. Uh, you're almost always guaranteed to get one because of your searching with Davis and all the draw power you have with um, Demi V, um, Gabumon, um, just, uh, yeah, that's enough draw power and that's really all you need. So get your early attacks in, dig for your combo pieces by digivolving and using your draw effects. Um, you want to hide your first Paledramon or Dino Beamon in your raising area. And then uh, wait for a situation where you can get yourself to three memory, either by establishing a Davis or maybe you have a hammer spark or two in your hand. Uh, once you get to that three memory threshold, you can raise out your Pale German or Dino B, uh, swing, and then uh, digivolve into Imperial German and either get one or two extra attacks in. And then you can kind of play the game out from there. Um, you always want to be looking for lethal. Um, this is especially important uh, with your Imperial Dramon because it can restand itself. Uh, oftentimes, it is better to leave it standing so it isn't vulnerable to a counterattack. So, if you know you can't finish off your opponent, let, let, let's say you're like one security short of uh, being able to go for game, maybe instead of going for the uh, third attack with your uh, Pyle Dramon Imperial Dramon stack, uh, you just attack twice and then you leave it standing and then maybe try to establish another attacker and then pass the turn over. Um, that way you can still threaten two attacks with your Imperial Drummond next turn, plus you can threaten attacks with um, the card that you played in addition to that, and um, that can really put some pressure on your opponent to either look for blockers or find some other way to remove your Imperial Drummond besides attacking into it. Uh, which goes into, oops, the uh, don't be greedy. That's the biggest thing you can take away from playing this Imperial German deck. Because it is such an aggro deck and a lot of times you're going to be used to uh, getting your whole combo off and winning quickly, um, it can get, you know, you can get tunnel visioned basically is what I'm trying to say. And uh, you're going to try to swing for game, you're going to miss lethal and then you're going to get punished. And uh, especially with the Blitz Omni, because sometimes you don't want to Blitz Omni over your Imperial German because you'll lose your extra attacks and sometimes you need that extra attack to swing for game so um, save the blitz omni as a finisher 
or if you think that your opponent has a way to kill your stack with an effect or by spinning it. So for example, against green, uh, it's a pretty safe bet to go into Blitz Omni because it prevents them from nidhogging you. Um, against security control, you can negate one of their options to destroy, uh, stuff like that. So it's something that you're going to learn by playing the game and by learning your matchups. But for the most part, um, you can pretty safely go for game um, with this deck. Just try not to overextend with your swings and then get countered attacked on the clap back. All right, so this is the card that new Imperial Dramon players really tend to overlook. I know me especially when I first started playing this deck, I hated Dino Bimon. Like I just wanted to play eight Pyil Dramons if I could. And I felt like Dino B was kind of like the card that you kind of had to sacrifice, sacrifice for your build, build in order to, to um, run it more consistently. consistently. But, but as, as I've, I've played the deck more and um, as, as we've gotten, gotten better green cards, cards Dino, Dino B has, has definitely um, stood out as a pretty powerful, powerful part of the deck. deck. Um, not, not, first, first of all, it has piercing, piercing. so it, it has, has that, that on top of the Dino Beast, so it essentially can get over blockers um, a much, much better than Pale Drummond can, because so, you know they can't block, they'll still lose their security, security and you still get jamming on that check. check. Pretty good. You, you get access to green level sixes, most, most importantly, the Nidhogg. I think that's by far the best green level six and your best secondary boss that you can run in the deck. Uh, you, you can, can also, also run Boncho Stingmon. This is an old attack, but it still can be relevant, especially in the mirror or into Lord Knight. So if you're seeing a lot of mirrors or Lord Knights, uh, consider taking in a Boncho Sting. So that way you can put it over your Dino B and then you can randomly get three checks and piercing out of nowhere. It's, it's pretty, pretty strong. strong. You, you get, get access, access to green options. Uh, uh, needle spray is pretty good in combination with Dino B because you, you can needle spray something and then swing over it, get piercing and jamming, or you can needle spray a bigger threat and then go into Nidhogg and then spin it back to the bottom of their deck. Um, it's, it's definitely a high roll combo, combo, but it is something that is worth considering and it can be very strong if you see it. Uh, there's, there's also Positron, Positron Laser, laser uh, which, which is a pretty big security bomb. bomb. So if your opponent checks it in security, you'll, you'll probably blow them out with it. And um, even, even just playing it from your hand can be pretty good. And you can also get access to uh, Green Tamers, since uh, all the Green Tamers uh, need a green level 5 or higher Digimon to activate their effect, which is uh, pretty strange. Or at least all the good ones, anyways. But um, Dino B fits that criteria exactly perfectly, and it can do some pretty interesting things with those. So, as far as your green techs go, you have again Needle Spray and Positron Laser. Um, if I had to choose between the two, me personally, I like Needle Spray, uh, but again, Positron Laser is a pretty big bomb. Um, I would play these over um, Kakaitis Breath if we go back to that um, standard list. So this, these two Kakaitis Breath slots, you can play two Needle Spray or two Positron Laser, or you can split them 1-1, and that is pretty good, I think. Um, hidden Potential Discovered. Uh, this is a card that you can use to cheese out your Imperial. So you can go uh, Dino B, Hidden Potential Discovered, into uh, Imperial. So you can tap the Dino B itself for the Hidden Potential, and then put the Imperial Dream on top of it for free, and then restand it. So it could come up. Uh, you can also Hidden Potential into Nidhogg, which, as we all know from Green, is a very, very high-value play. Um, you, you can, can only play, play one, one, so in, in that, that sense, sense uh, it's, it's kind of a tech in and of itself, but um, if, if you're feeling especially cheesy, uh, it's a fun card to play. Uh, the aforementioned Boncho Sting, uh, again, if you see a lot of Lord Knights or Mirrors, uh, even Black, this card can get over a lot of Black cards, uh, especially the ones that don't have Reboot. You can get three checks out of nowhere with this card. Um, I guess, I guess if you don't know what it does, let me move, move myself here. So it has piercing, and then when attacking, uh, if the opponent's Digimon has 12,000 DP or more, uh, this Digimon gets 7,000 DP, so it becomes 16,000 DP, and security attack plus two, so it's three checks. Um, it's a very high value card in those situations where you go against decks that have uh, 12,000 DP or more Digimon. So again, Lord Knight, Mirror, Black, 
Um, definitely consider running this card if you see a lot of those in your meta. Uh, green Tamers. Um, these are one-ups in Imperial. Uh, I would play these over the uh, Sora and Joe in the uh, standard build that I showed before. So Mimi, if you have Dino B out, you can then tap Mimi and um, bring out another egg. So it helps you set up your second stack, which is Imperial's biggest weakness again, is that it's kind of just a one-stack deck. So this helps you set up your second stack faster and be um, consistently keeping your tempo. Um, if you have a Nidhogg, the Mimi also lets you do that. So especially in Imperial, uh, once you use the Nidhogg's Digiburst, it's really just a 13k vanilla. You're not doing anything with it except swinging face. So, so the Mimi helps you do a little something more with that. that. Uh, same idea with the Izzy. Uh, if you have a level 5 or higher green Digimon in play, uh, you can suspend the Tamer, reveal the top card of your deck, and if it's a Digimon of any color, you can add it to your hand. So if you have Dino B or Nidhogg out, you can just be tapping Izzy and get a free extra draw every turn. Uh, pretty good in this deck, again, helps you set up that second stack and not run low on resources. And, and this, this is the super cheese tech option, the Izzy and Mimi Tool Tamer. So if your opponent has a suspended Digimon in play, you gain two memory. Um, I think it's probably as consistent as Sora and Joe. Your opponent can play around it a little bit more, but if they're playing around this card, then they're not attacking you, which means that you're more likely to be winning out in any security race, which is what you want to be doing in Imperial Digimon anyways. And the uh, cheese effect is that when you attack with a level 5 green Digimon, you can tap this card and then look at the top three cards of your deck. If there is a level 6 green Digimon in those three cards, you can Digivolve into it for free. So the cheese idea is you swing with Dino B, activate Izzy and Mimi, uh, search top three, and then if you are big ass sack and you find a Nidhogg in there, you Digivolve into the Nidhogg, use the effect, and then clear their board. Um, it's extremely, extremely high roll. Um, but if you're a sacker, or maybe you just want to play for fun, this is a funny card to play as a one of in place of the Sora and Joe. All right. Uh, if you're not really feeling those green texts, um, maybe you just want to be more blue minded, or just you find the green stuff to be a little bit more inconsistent because you're kind of relying on seeing that Dino B. Um, you can run um, the BT1 Omnimon. Uh, this gives you more removal that the deck doesn't have. So maybe you don't even want to run it hog. You can just run a couple of these BT1 Omnimons instead. Um, I wouldn't run them instead of the Blitz Omni because that's such a powerful finisher for this deck, which is kind of the point. But you can definitely run this instead of the Nidhogg Mon, I would say. Um, you're kind of over-indexing into level 7s, and then uh, remember you only, run, you only really run the 4 Imperial Dramon as your blue level 6s. There really isn't anything else that synergizes with the deck, unfortunately. Blue level 6s are a bit on the... Um, weaker side unless they have their own dedicated deck like imperial or hexablau um siakoman your opponent can't reduce digivolution costs this helps you win the mirror because it prevents imperial dramon from coming out for three memory and um it also helps against green and i guess um mega digimon fusion decks so purple basically uh, this is a very good card. If you see a lot of those in your meta, you would play at least two, I would say. And uh, Grizzlymon, this is just your 6k blocker. Um, you can play this instead of one of your Quellamons, or you can maybe take out Tobiomons. Um, basically, if you just feel like you need more blockers, um, this is a good option, especially in this meta with all the Ricky Rushes flying around. Um... I don't, don't say yet you would need it necessarily, necessarily since this is an aggro deck. Um, blockers aren't as valuable since you're more um, interested in swinging face than blocking with your cards. Plus, the two cost that you evolve is definitely slower than the uh, one cost that you have that you would be replacing with this. So keep that in mind, but it's a good option no matter what. All right, uh, weaknesses of the deck. Um, Imperial Dramon weaknesses are... It's a single stack deck. A lot of times um, you have the first Imperial you make is the only Imperial you get to make because once they remove it, um, it's tough to make another one 
you'll be really far behind in tempo. So that's why um, at the beginning of the video, I said that the way to play the deck was to get in a couple chips in early and then use your first Imperial as your finisher. Uh, if you have to go for a second one, um, it'll be hard to find it, oftentimes in my experience. Uh, so again, vulnerable to removal. If they get rid of your first Imperial Ramon, it's really hard to come back. Uh, has no removal of its own. This is definitely one of the biggest weaknesses of the deck. Uh, if you come across an annoying card like uh, X Antibody, a Lord Knight, a Sword Defeat, uh, any big threat that your opponent can throw on the board is very likely to stick. Um, they can even take advantage of you and hard play a level 5, and then, you know, they know you're not going to be able to get rid of it, and then they can go into level 6 right after, you know, early on in the game. So, so just be conscious, conscious of that. Um, Kaikaida's Breath, I don't really consider true removal because they're just going to play the card again. It just goes back to their hand. But it does uh, clear big stacks. So in that sense, it helped buy you a couple turns. Uh, and hitting it in security does feel good. So Kaikaida's Breath gets a vote of confidence in that sense. Um, big blockers are tough to deal with in this deck. So, so especially black, black who can give blocker and heritable to their big level sixes and level sevens um because anything that's pretty much seven thousand or more that has blocker is going to be a problem for you because it's going to um, prevent you from going for your full pale german and pale german combo memory blockers so the ones that say your opponent can gain memory except with tamer effects this turns off your hammer spark uh which is very annoying and then there's the even worse one to deal with in Imperial German is the your opponent can't reduce digivolution costs. So the way Imperial German works is that when it normally costs five, but when you digivolve it on top of a Pyro German or a Dino Bibon, it reduces the cost by two. So this essentially, this cute mon, um, there's also Siako mon in blue and Gauss mon in red. Uh, they basically force you to have to pay five for your Imperial German, which completely ruins your combo. Because then at that point you have to see Davis and two Hammer Sparks, or you have to have Davis and an active Sword in Joe in order to reach that five memory. Um, it's just a really, really hard condition to meet. And because Imperial German does not play removal, or actually just doesn't even have access to removal, um, these cards are very, very likely to stick. So if your opponent just plays one early, chances are it's going to stay there for the rest of the game, unless you see Nidhogg. So again, that's why Nidhogg is a pretty good tech in this deck, and you should definitely be playing it, because it'll clear these cards out, and then frees you up to hopefully um, get to Imperial before they see another one. And finally, because Imperial is essentially a aggro combo deck, um, if you don't see Imperial German, uh, you're probably just going to lose the game, unfortunately. Uh, luckily, uh, you have lots of ways to draw and dig for Imperial German, so it's not really a problem. I would say uh, maybe one out of every ten games, you're going to find yourself um, on the losing end of your own deck, just because you drew poorly and didn't see Imperial. Uh, I guess that's any deck, but it feels especially bad in this one, since you're really only playing four level sixes, and you're kind of all in on the Imperial pain train strategy. All right, so that's pretty much the uh, ins and outs of the deck. Um, pretty simple deck to pilot. Um, there's a lot of gameplay videos out there. Imperial has been a deck forever, pretty much since the game has come out. Um, so, and even still, it's a very easy deck to pilot. I, if you're a beginner, this is definitely the one to play. And I'm sure that if you've been watching this video or you already had some sort of interest in the deck then you're just wondering all right how much does it actually cost to build this thing everyone tells me it's inexpensive what is inexpensive actually so i kind of tallied up all the uh quote unquote money cards in this deck um kind of the most relatively expensive card i would say is the uh bt3 vmon uh, this card is obviously very good but it's still ten dollars um, it's, it's probably, probably the only $10 rare in the game. Um, you're just gonna have to suck it up because you definitely, I would say you definitely need four to play this deck. Um, at least it's not Pulse Mon, so give yourself that. <laughs> uh, Mon's about two bucks, Dino Beast three bucks, Pilger Mon's around nine. Uh, they fluctuate anywhere between four and ten. Um, I think four was probably the lowest they were ever at. 
but since it's been winning and because there's a lot of future support confirmed, I would say it's probably hovering around 9 for the foreseeable future. It talks like 5, Omnimon from BT5, the Blitz one, is around 12, 10 to $12, and then if you want to play the BT1 Omni, that one's around 15 I think. The lowest it's ever been. It used to be a $100 card, pretty freaking crazy. Um, Davis is about five bucks. Hammer Sparks around two bucks. Um, if you can find a blue starter deck for MSRP, number one, you've basically just found like a negative gold, and you should definitely buy it. But even like a twenty dollar blue starter deck, it's probably not terrible because you can also get um, some Alekmons and Grizzlymons and um, Gorillamons out of it, which are all cards you're going to be needing anyways. Um, anything, anything more than that, that I would not play the, the blue starter deck and just buy the singles. singles. Alright, so, so that, that total runs around $150 just for all of those cards. Those are the most expensive cards in the deck. And, and then, then there's just like the other random commons and rares um, that you need to finish it out. Um, I don't think it's going to cost you anything more than $10 and that's being like uh, on the high end. Like you have to pay shipping and all that stuff. If you have a good locals, uh, I'm sure there's a lot of guys who would be willing to hook you up with their extra commons and stuff. So, so yeah, yeah no more than ten dollars for the rest of the deck outside of these cards so, so you're, you're pretty much looking at around 160 dollars just to completely build the deck from scratch like you have no cards at all uh which, which i think is an incredibly fair entry point, point. Um, it's, it's no $50, $50 deck, deck, that's for sure, but uh, you will definitely win games with this deck. deck. Uh, you will learn how to play the game, and um, most importantly, it's actually going to be a solid investment because Imperial Dramon is going to stay a deck for a long time. There is a lot of already confirmed future support. So um, the EX1 set that I believe is coming out here at the end of the year has a new Pale Dramon, Dino Beamon, and Imperial Dramon, which I believe are pretty good. Um, I don't really look too much into future sets. I'm more someone who's focused on current English sets and like what to do with that. Um, I'm sure there are other channels who cover that. I, so anyone has a recommendation, go ahead and drop it in the comments. Um, there's a confirmed starter deck with the uh, DNA Digivolution mechanic, which was just announced. So uh, that's going to be pretty powerful. Um, the mechanic seems pretty busted. Um, if, you don't want, if you don't know what it is, basically you can stack two of your different stacks together on top of each other and then Digivolve into a DNA Digivolve card for free and it restands itself. So I'm sure there's some shenanigans that will come from that. There is confirmed support in BT-8, um, I believe. We're probably finally going to get Fighter Mode and Paladin Mode. Uh, hopefully both, maybe one or the other. Um, a lot of people have been asking for this, especially me, for a very long time. It's my favorite Digimon, for sure. Um, so there's definitely going to be support there. Just general blue-green support. Um, blue and green are always going to be very solid colors. So any generically good blue or green um option or tamer is going to be viable in imperial dramon and lastly it's a fan favorite uh, fan favorites always get um boosts you know like charizard dark magician blue eyes white dragon you know those cards are always going to see play imperial dramon is definitely right up there with those type, types of cards so uh popular anime cards always good in the card game all right, so um, hopefully that served as a pretty good primer on the Imperial Dramon deck. Uh, if you're a new player, I highly, 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 highly recommend playing this deck. Um, it's the best beginner deck by far. Um, you will learn how to play the game. You will learn how to win games. And you will um, cheese people out of tournament wins and probably build your collection yourself by winning said tournaments. All right, so uh, I know I've been uh, kind of MIA for like two weeks. I've just been kind of busy with life, and honestly, I've just been kind of lazy. But uh, the videos will keep coming. Um, I have a uh, Greymon tribal deck profile coming up with a buddy of mine. Uh, I think in general, we're, we're going to be covering um, kind of more off-meta BT5 decks now that you know, we have an extra month of BT5 and a lot of the major events are kind of over. So I'm sure people will be looking for more fun decks to play, uh, some cheap side decks to build, stuff like that. So we're going to be covering those. Uh, and we might even get into looking into future decks. 
uh, maybe like a Bond Friendship deck profile or a uh, Jessamon deck profile. Stuff, Stuff like that. that. All right, guys. So uh, thanks for watching. Uh, see you guys in the next video.